The animal kingdom is a crazy place, especially when we involve and start breeding unexpected combos together. And of course, when I say we, I mean humanity in general, not those of us who work here at the Genius Lemon. These are 20 amazing hybrid animals that actually exist. Number 20. Zorus the Zorus is one of a variety of equine hybrids known as zebroids, which is the term for a horse hybrid with zebra heritage. The Zorus is a hybrid between a male zebra, or stallion, and a female horse or mare, resulting in an animal that looks more like a horse than a zebra, yet has stripes. The Zorus's zebra component also provides resistance to various parasites and illnesses that commonly afflict both horses and donkeys, indicating that they are not only tough but also resilient animals. The Zorus can vary considerably in its size and color depending on its parents due to the fact that there are not only three subspecies of zebra, but approximately 300 distinct breeds of domestic horse. So this is what a horse and a zebra crossbreed into. Interesting, huh? Both zebras and horses wander freely in the wild, in herds that can number anywhere from two to more than 200 individuals, making Zorses generally social creatures who like to dwell with other equines. Their personalities, on the other hand, are quite similar to their mothers, especially their powerful flight reaction, which is heightened by their zebra heritage. Sources are large, muscular creatures who spend the bulk of their life grazing. In addition to having greater night vision than humans, they have nearly 360 degree vision, with the exception of a blind zone right in front of their nose and right behind them. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19, Savannah Cat. The Savannah Cat is a one-of-a-kind cat with a distinct set of characteristics, resulting from its hybridization. These are produced by mating a wild African serval with a domestic Siamese cat, resulting in a hybrid that has the look of a real wild cat while possessing the disposition of a domestic cat. Or maybe it turns out the other way around sometimes. Watch out for those claws. In any event, Savannah was the name of the first Savannah cat kitten, and she went on to name the entire breed. And the Savannah cat was also soon recognized by the International Cat Association, which happened in 2001. One. They have a stunning look that has been described as both magnificent and dignified. They resemble a cheetah in appearance, with long legs and spotted patterns on a golden coat. making them easily identifiable. They also have enormous ears, which should deter any other animals from digging up your yard. Savannah cats are said to have a dog-like disposition, since they frequently follow their owners around the home and like being touched. However, because these creatures are cautious and powerful, they must be socialized at a young age. Number 18, Kama. The Kama is a hybrid between a camel and a llama. It's a male dromedary camel, the sort with one hump, and a female llama, to be precise. In 1998, the first Kama was born. The goal was to develop an animal that could produce more wool than a llama, but with the size and strength of a camel, and a more laid-back demeanor. Of course, llamas and camels do not dwell in the same area, and the two species have been separated for more than 30 million years. So it's regarded a natural marvel that you can actually just breed them together and have healthy camma without any issues. Male dromedaries are almost six times the size of female llamas, therefore there are some problems. Miss Llama isn't going to like that, therefore the whole thing will have to be done through artificial insemination. Too bad for Mr. Camel. Camas may weigh up to 1,000 pounds and stand up to 55 inches tall at the shoulder. They lack the hump and have a shorter fleece than llamas, yet they can drink large amounts of water and live in the desert for long periods of time. Number 17. Lagwar. A lagwar, also known as a lepjag, 
is a cross between a male leopard and a female jaguar. Regardless of which animal was the daddy, the words jagolep and lepjag are frequently interchanged. Lepjags have been raised as animal performers in large numbers because they are more tractable than jaguars. A jaguar gave birth to two cubs from a mating with a black leopard in Spain's Barnabos Menagerie. One resembled the mother or female but was darker, while the other was black with the dam's rosettes showing. Because melanism is recessive in panthers, the jaguar would have to be black or a jaguar-black leopard hybrid bearing the recessive gene. Female jagoleps or lepjags are reproductive, and their progeny are known as lejagoleps when they are paired to a male lion. In the early 1900s, one such complicated hybrid was presented as the Congolese spotted lion, implying that it was an exotic African beast rather than a man-made hybrid. A.D. Bartlett, an expert, stated, I have more than once met with instances of a male jaguar, Pionsa, breeding with a female leopard. Pipartis. These hybrids were also reared recently in Wombles' well-known traveling collection. I've seen some animals of this kind bred between a male black jaguar and a female Indian leopard. The young partook strongly of the male being almost black. Number 16. Green Sea Slug the sea slug, Elysia chlorotica, has the same bright green color as a fresh leaf. It can also absorb carbon dioxide in a leaf-like and non-slug-like manner. It may even go for months without eating if the laboratory is well lit. For decades, scientists have been trying to figure out how the slug, also known as the emerald green Elisa, gets its solar energy and they are slowly piecing together the full tail. According to a release from the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts, the latest data supports the hypothesis that the slug steals DNA from the algae it consumes. These slugs, which are about the size of a postage stamp, eat mainly algae by draining all of the tasty gelatinous cytoplasm and granular protein bits out of the plants. They eat algal coroplasts, also known as plastids, which are green peanut-shaped organelles that carry out photosynthesis, absorbing sunlight and mixing it with carbon dioxide and water to produce food. The chloroplasts are digested by most sap vacuuming slugs immediately anyway, but other species retain them in huge transparent digestive glands for weeks to months, coloring the creature's vivid hues of green. This is a real plant-animal hybrid. Number 15. Pizzly Bear a pizzly bear is a grizzly polar bear hybrid, which is rather amusing. This is a very unusual ursid hybrid that has been seen in both captivity and the wild, testing the DNA of a unique-looking bear taken at Saks Harbor, Northwest Territories on Banks Island in the Canadian Arctic in 2006, verified the existence of this hybrid in nature. Since then, there have been eight verified hybrids, all descended from the same mother polar bear. In the past, possible wild-bred polar bear-grizzly bear hybrids have been reported and shot, but DNA testing to confirm the bear's lineage were unavailable. But why do we have to shoot rare animals all of the time? With a number of unconfirmed sightings and eight verified cases, thoughts about how such hybrids may naturally develop have moved beyond the realm of speculation. Although these sister species live in close proximity, direct interaction has not been common since polar bears hunt, breed, and occasionally even construct maternity dens on sea ice, whereas brown bears live primarily on land. On April 16, 2006, Jim Martell, an Idaho hunter allegedly shot a grizzly polar bear hybrid at Saks Harbor on Banks Island, Northwest Territories. Martell has gone hunting for polar bears with his local guide, Roger Kupdana, and had mistakenly slain the animal for a regular polar bear. Officials were drawn to the creature because it had large claws, a hump back, a shallow face, and brown spots around the eyes, nose, back, and foot, all of which are grizzly bear characteristics. The hunter would have faced a $1,000 Canadian fine and up to a year in prison if the animal was determined to be a grizzly. Number 14. Penny a hinny is a cross between a stallion and a jenny, a male horse and a female donkey. Some of you may be thinking, wait a minute, isn't that just a regular mule? A mule, on the other hand, is a male donkey crossed with a female horse. Mules are a far more frequent hybrid. 
Due to genetic imprinting, there are also significant variations between mules and hinnies, which I won't go into detail about since I don't have 11 hours left in this video, but basically you inherit certain things from your father and others from your mother. Hinnies are smaller and have more donkey-like personalities, such as being laid back, obstinate, and sluggish, whereas mules have more horse-like personalities, such as being brave, active, nimble. Both are good for distinct purposes, with a hinny being ideal as a pack mount and a mule being ideal for trail riding. Both mules and hinnies are renowned for being obstinate, with hinnies being much more so than mules. This, however, is a sign of their brains, and it is generally believed they will not allow you to pull them into doing anything unsafe or dangerous for no reason. Number 13. Tygon a tigon is a male tiger crossed with a female lion. This is a cross that might have happened in nature at least once, when lions and tigers shared territory in Asia. No one knows if it ever happened, but tigons have been bred in captivity several times. Because these cats belong to the same genus, there's no difficulty with them reproducing, but because they are different species, the newborn tigon will frequently be unable to reproduce. When a tigon is born, it is the end of the line, which is why they are so rare. With dad stripes and mom's mane, if it's a male that is, the tigon resembles both parents. Also, not many people realize that lions have spots, which become increasingly noticeable on the tigon's fur as time goes on. The tigon will not grow as large as his father since it will receive growth inhibitor genes from its lion size, preventing it from being too large. A tigon's average weight is approximately 400 pounds, so they're not to be trifled with. Number 12. Glowfish Glowfish is a brand of genetically modified luminous fish that has been copyrighted and patented. There are a number of glowfish on the market right now. The first glowfish to be marketed in pet stores were zebra fish, which are now available in brilliant red, green, orange, yellow, blue, pink, and purple fluorescent hues. Recently, tetras in the colors electric green, sunburst orange, moonrise pink, starfire red, cosmic blue, and galactic purple, as well as an electric green tiger barb, a glow rainbow shark, and a beta have been introduced to the roster. It is one of the first genetically modified animals to become publicly available, despite not being created for the ornamental fish trade. Dr. Zihuan Gong and his colleagues at the National University of Singapore were experimenting with a gene that encodes the green fluorescent protein, which was initially taken from a jellyfish, and generated strong green fluorescence when it was naturally created in 1999. They put the gene into a zebrafish embryo, which allowed it to integrate into the fish's genome, causing the fish to glow brilliantly in both natural white and ultraviolet. Their objective was to create a fish that could detect pollution by fluorescing selectively in the presence of poisons in the environment. The initial stage in this procedure was the creation of the continuously fluorescing fish, for which the National University of Singapore submitted a patent application. Scientists from NUS and business people Alan Blake and Richard Crockett from Yorktown Technologies, LP, an Austin, Texas-based firm, met and inked a contract, giving Yorktown the worldwide rights to commercialize the luminous zebra fish, which they dubbed Glowfish. Number 11. Bengal Cat Gene Sugden Mill, a well-known cat breeder, developed the Bengal Cat breed in the 1980s. The Bengal Cat is a cross between a domestic cat and an Asian leopard cat, with the wild cat's outstanding beauty and agility combined with the domestic cat's more laid-back demeanor. The Bengal is not a beginner's cat, as it has acquired many characteristics from its wild father, a forest-dwelling wild cat. This implies the Bengal Cat will be obsessed with climbing and will have plenty of energy to spare. They can leap more than 10 feet in the air with ease, and will turn destructive if not provided with enough amusement. They've been dubbed flying cats because of their incredible jumping abilities. They are also quite clever and can learn to do tricks much more readily than other cats. Bengal cats are also known for their beauty thanks to their silky, marbled coats. Plus, they contain a gene dubbed the glitter gene, which gives their coat an iridescent shimmer, giving them a 70s disco cat vibe if that's your thing. Number 10. Geep 
Even though goats and sheep have coexisted for longer than recorded history, interbreeding between them is extremely unusual. They do not belong to the same genus, but they do belong to the same Caprinae subfamily. But uncommon doesn't imply never, and when this combination happens, the result is a geep. Because these two are too dissimilar to create healthy children, the majority of geep are still stubborn. However, there are accounts of some geep surviving. In Botswana in 2000, a male sheep mated with a female goat, and the resulting baby geep was born healthy with a coarse outer coat and fuzzy inner coat, goat-like legs and a sheep-like torso. It was also renowned for having an intense libido, pursuing every female goat or sheep it came across. Other incidents occurred in the Netherlands in 2011 and at My Petting Zoo in Scottsdale, Arizona in 2014, when a baby geep called Butterfly was born. This little geep was healthy and cheerful and quickly became one of the petting zoo's most popular attractions. Number 9. Zo. This might have been dubbed a yo. Alternatively, how about calling it a cack? But whomever came up with the term zo for this mix between a cow and a yak chose to make up their own laws. This very large bovid is employed as a farm animal in Tibet and Mongolia. They're recognized for being a hardy animal that produces a lot of milk and meat while costing less to feed and care for than ordinary yaks or cattle. Their adaptability has been observed, and this hybrid has piqued the curiosity of neighboring Asian nations. They may weigh up to 1,300 pounds and reach 5.5 feet tall, with a long, shaggy hair of a yak but a cow-like face and horns. The males are infertile, but the females are fertile, therefore they may be crossed with bulls or male yaks to create a hybrid with greater yak or cow proportions. They can survive at extremely high altitudes and are are bigger and more agile than either of their parents. They are now frequently used to transport weights weighing up to 300 pounds for persons attempting to climb Mount Everest. Number 8. The Belgian Super Cow Belgian blue cattle are a breed of beef cattle that originated in Belgium. Double muscling refers to the Belgian blue's incredibly lean, hyper-sculpted, ultra-muscular body. The double muscling phenotype is a heritable trait that causes an increase in the number of muscle fibers rather than individual muscle fiber growth. This characteristic is also shared by the Piedmontese breed of cattle. Both of these breeds have a higher capacity to convert feed into lean muscle, resulting in meat with lower fat content and less tenderness. The Belgian blue is recognized from its distinctive blue-gray speckled hair, which may range in color from white to black. The breed was developed in the 19th century in central and upper Belgium by combining local varieties with a shorthorn cattle breed from the United Kingdom. Nick Tut, a farmer from central Canada who relocated to West Texas and displayed the cattle to institutions in the area, brought Belgian blue cattle to the United States in 1978. The exceptional carcass features of the double muscling breed add value to the breed. However, when the fat level of the meat decreases, the marbling of the flesh decreases, reducing the tenderness of the meat. The meaty softness of the Belgian blue, on the other hand, has been claimed to be equally as tender due to the presence of a significant number of tiny muscle fibers. In most situations, the slower rate of fat deposition causes slaughter to be postponed resulting in higher maintenance expenses for such animals. Belgian blue cattle are more difficult to maintain and do not prosper in harsh conditions. Number 7. Narluga the child of a narwhal mother and a beluga father is a very weird hybrid whale. Jens Larsen, an institute substance hunter, killed a trio of odd whales off the western coast of Greenland in the late 1980s. Narwhals, whose males are famed for having long helical tusks projecting from their snouts, and belugas, with their unique white skin, were two species he and his fellow substance hunters would often catch. Larsen's new kills, on the other hand, were neither. 
Their skins were consistently gray, not white or speckled like a narwhal's. The tails were narwhal-like, while the flippers were beluga-like. Larson has never seen anything like them in all his years of hunting. He was so moved that he hung one of their heads from his tool shed's roof. As you do when you find something cute you like, it drew the attention of Mads Peter Haida Jorgensen, a marine mammal researcher, in 1990. He transported it to the Greenland Fisheries Research Institute in Copenhagen for investigation with Larson's consent. After comparing it to the skulls of known beluga whales and narwhals, he hypothesized that it was a narluga, a hybrid between the two species. It seemed like a good theory. Narwhals and belugas are the same size, live in the same Arctic seas, and are more closely related than any other species. Individuals from both species have been discovered, swimming in the pods of the other, but no one had ever discovered a narluga before, and Hyde Jorgensen has no method of proving his theory at the moment. Number 6. Sturtlefish Meet the sturtlefish, a novel fish hybrid discovered by scientists by mistake. This strange-looking fish is a cross between the severely endangered American paddlefish and the Russian sturgeon. The Russian sturgeon and the American paddlefish were never meant to be together. The sturtlefish was created after scientists inadvertently produced a novel hybrid of the two. The Russian sturgeon is most known for its eggs, which are marketed as high-end caviar. The American paddlefish has a large snout and is distributed in only half of the United States. Because of their old history and sluggish development, both species are referred to as fossil fish. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, both sturgeon and paddlefish are critically endangered. Scientists are naturally intrigued if sturgeon and paddlefish may be produced in captivity because both fish species are endangered. The researchers divided the hybridized fish into two groups once they emerged from the eggs. Some of the sturtle fish with double the maternal DNA resembled sturgeon rather than paddlefish. The second group appeared to be an equal blend of the two species since it contained the same proportion of maternal and paternal DNA. Number 5. Liger when you put a male lion and a female tiger in a cage together, what happens? In all probability, they will try to kill each other right away, with the tigeress appearing to be the more dangerous. But what if you reared them as cubs together, so they were familiar with each other and even maybe liked each other? Then things may become a little more passionate, and you might end up with a liger, a lion-tiger hybrid. Because the habitats of these large cats no longer overlap in the wild, the liger is only found in captivity today. Ligers are incredible animals because they are enormous, far larger than normal lions and tigers. They are in fact the biggest cats in the planet. Hercules, the world's largest healthy liger, weighed an incredible 922 pounds in 2013. That's a lot of feline. Ligers are exceedingly uncommon as they only exist in zoos, with an estimated population of less than 100 around the globe. Around 30 of them are in the United States, with another 20 in China. If you reside in one of those nations, take advantage of the opportunity to view one of these incredible hybrid creatures. Number 4. Zonkey because the zebra and the donkey are closely related and both belong to the horse family, they share a lot of features in common, including their size. The zonkey is comparable in size to these creatures, but has a more distinct donkey-like look, with the apparent difference of inheriting their zebra parents' distinctive striped pattern on their fur. Zonkeys are creatures that are tan, brown, or gray in color, with a lighter underbelly, and their darker stripes are most visible on the lighter portions of their body, such as their legs and belly. They are much harder to see on the darker parts. The zonkey also has a black mane that stretches from the ridge of their back to the tip of its black tail, as well as a big head and ears that give it the donkey-like appearance. Two of the three zebra species that live on the African continent may be found in eastern Africa, while the other can be found in more southern areas. Zebras are more commonly encountered in large herds, notably on the Serengeti Plains, where they move thousands of kilometers 
kilometers after the rains that bring new grass. They like to live in savannas and open forests across their historical range. Some are also found near to human areas, where they are known to compete for food with domestic livestock, such as donkeys. Donkeys are most likely to be generated spontaneously in the wild in these locations because it allows the two distinct species to mate. Unfortunately, the majority of the world's donkeys are kept in zoos and animal institutes where they are routinely reproduced. Number 3. Gen Pet Artist Adam Branges created Gen Pets, a mixed-media installation art project. It's referred to as Exposure Hoax. The project has been shown in a number of galleries around Canada and Europe, and has received some press coverage. The monsters were sculpted, animated latex and plastic animals with robotic electronics to imitate sluggish respiration. They were designed to be presented as live, but dormant, bioengineered animals for purchase as pets, and they resembled tiny bald-skinned, and unattractive humanoids. The created packaging said that the animals came in four different colors, had four different personalities and levels of activity, and had limited voice capabilities. The sculptures and packaging, as well as the professional-looking fake website, are so convincing that many people are taken in. In 2006, Gen Pets were featured on the website of the Museum of Hoaxes in San Diego, California, as well as on BBC News Worldwide's Click Program. All of the work was hand done by artist Adam Brangis, with the help of makeup artist Crystal Pallister, for the creature coloring. The photos depict the 19 Gen Pet units that are on exhibit at the art galleries. At both North America and Europe, Gen Pets have been shown in a number of fine art galleries and museums. Number 2. Wolfen now we have the wolfin, which does sound a little strange. Wolfins are the offspring of a bottlenose dolphin and a false killer whale, and they do exist in nature, but in extremely small numbers. False killer whales are roughly midway between a dolphin and a killer whale in size, with the killer whale's head and teeth. They may grow to be 20 feet long and will associate with a variety of species, with the males preferring to mate with whatever female they can find, regardless of the species. So that's how it works in the wild occasionally. The wolfin may grow to be between 12 and 22 feet long and weigh approximately 600 pounds, while the bottlenose dolphin has 88 teeth and the false killer whale has 44. The wolfin has 66 teeth, which is an average of the two parents. Kakaimalu, the first known wolfin in captivity was born in 1985. They tend to have more dolphin-like features, although they will still be considerably bigger. Her daughter, Kawikai, is the only other captive wolfin besides Kikaimalu. Number 1. Wolf Dog you might be wondering what a wolf dog is. A wolf dog is a mix between a wolf and a domesticated dog, with the most often crossed domesticated breeds being Siberian Huskies, Malamutes, and German Shepherds. Although both wolves and domestic dogs are interfertile, meaning they are genetically close enough to mate, these hybrid pups are uncommon in nature due to wolves' violent and territorial tendencies. And while dogs have some wolf in their lineage, an animal may only be called a real wolf dog if a pure wolf ancestor was born within the past five generations. The earliest wolf dogs, believe it or not, were hybrids of wild wolves and Pomeranians. The Pomeranian of the 18th century, on the other hand, were not renowned as purse pooches as they are today. They were huge, powerful working dogs used to herd livestock and pull sleds through difficult, icy terrain. Wolf dogs, like many other dangerous canines, are controversial when it comes to whether or not they make excellent pets. Would you have one of these crazy animals as a pet? Which two animal species would you like to see hybridized? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!